I started. Good afternoon, folks. So Frank and I, Frank who's behind the camera at the moment, the two of us, we've been out tracking Bobcat over the past two days. And yesterday we actually came upon a fresh trail of what we presume to be a young Bobcat due to the size of its uh, prints, but also some of the behaviors that we were actually seeing in the trail. We decided yesterday, we had a long conversation as we were on the trail, do we actually follow this cat or do we backtrack it? And we decided to just backtrack it for most of the day yesterday with the idea of coming back out today. And the reason we decided that is we didn't want to push this animal. It's winter time and these animals are trying to survive out here and it was a fairly fresh trail so we decided we were going to back off, come back another day and here is this next day. So we've been on the trail of this bobcat uh, for probably around the past two, two and a half hours. And Frank's going to pan the camera a little bit left to right and you're going to notice what we've actually been traveling through for about the last 45 minutes, this really thick, dense white pine and hemlock. Very young growth here. And this is full of snowshoe hare. We found a lot of tracks and trails of snowshoe hare and a lot of sign of red squirrel and both of which are prey for the bobcat. So we also f followed the bobcat's trail again through this dense cover and Frank and I both noticed a very pungent smell and it was actually porcupine. We came upon a trail of a porcupine and they oftentimes leave their urine and scent right in the trails and it has a very effervescent piney smell because that's what they're feeding on right now is often the young hemlock trees and, and other um, evergreens at this time of the year. And we actually saw the actual porcupine. Didn't get it on film, but we did uh, have an encounter with a, with a porcupine. As we continue to follow the trail of the bobcat, uh, it's heading out towards these cliffs. I'm pointing actually towards them right now. And we actually last year set up a trail cam and got some pictures of uh, a pair of mating bobcats, which is pretty neat. And you'll see those on our website as well. But another thing that we wanted to share here is as we were following the trail, it veered off and actually came over to this dead snag here. And this is an old white pine tree that was killed off. If you pan up here, Frank, you, you'll notice it's actually been girdled at some point in the past by presumably a chainsaw. And we've noticed out in this same area, a number of these actually, you know, sizably large white pine trees have been killed off at some point in the past. Why, we don't know. But it makes a nice home for a lot of wildlife. Um, but it also is actually a nice area uh, which bobcats will tend to go out of their way to actually scent on. So they actually the trail was actually heading towards the cliffs, it veered off, came over here, and we noticed that the animal had backed up right to here, and they will actually scent. So they're leaving their pheromones in their urine, communication between the male and female, female and male. It's going to be mating season. Um, in February into March. So they're starting to seek out mates right now to mate with. And so they're gonna back up to a punky stump like this. And this holds a lot of moisture. So a lot of bang for the buck, if you will. If it's scenting here, it's gonna stay here for quite a while. Um, where on a, uh, a rock or something like that, it'll get washed off by the rain. But in an area like this, a punky old stump, it's gonna soak up that scent and hold those pheromones in there for a while so the animals can actually be communicating and know who's who's who and where the animals actually are. So zoom right in here, Frank, and we'll leave you off with that. This is a nice spot for what they call retromingent spraying.